Test one, two. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see it again, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. I'll sing it again. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you, yeah. I want to see. Come on, see you high, lift it up. See you high and lift it up. Shining in the light of glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing. Holy, holy, holy. Come on, sing it holy. Holy, 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 I want to see you. Holy, holy, yeah. holy, 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 holy. I want to see you. Come on, everybody. Sing it holy. Holy, oh. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. Come on, to see you high lifted up. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy to see you high, see you high and lift it up, shining in the light of glory. Yeah. Pour out your power, love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. 
I want to see you. Yes, I do, Lord. I want to see you. Open the eyes. to see you singing holy 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 I want to see you come on tell them tonight holy time you're holy lord holy 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 yeah holy 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 i want to see you thank you lord thank you lord thank you jesus Uh, we give you glory and honor, Lord. We pray, God, tonight that you would pour your spirit out. Lord, we just pray you would pour in 2024. Hallelujah. Amen. Pour it out, Lord. God, we are ready. We are open, Lord. Our hearts are open. Lord, our lives are open. We want to live a life of surrender to you, Lord. And so we're asking you tonight, Lord, even as we sing this song, pour your spirit out, God. That it would, uh, God, not only be a prayer, but it would become a reality. God, in our lives, that you would pour your spirit out. God, even in this place tonight, God, we pray. Oh, yeah, we thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Help me out, y'all. You've been down long enough. No more walking in shame Cause the way that He loves you Isn't something you can change You've been running in circles yeah. But you can't hide from grace Cause the way that He loves you Isn't something you can change Just like Lazarus out of that grave our god rewrites history jesus you change everything when you pour your spirit out just like silas singing with paul praise can break down prison wall hey! jesus you can have it all won't, won't you pour your spirit out of yeah. Pour your spirit out. Pour your spirit out. Yeah. Come on. You can rest in his presence. You can trust in his name. Because his burden is easy. And he's perfect in his ways. You can run to the Father. There's no reason to wait Cause his arms have been opened Hey! That's not something you can change Just like Lazarus Out of that grave I got Our God rewrites history Jesus Jesus, you change everything Won't you pour your spirit out Just like Silas Singing with Paul Praise can break down prison walls. Jesus, you can have. Won't you pour? Come on, just like Lazarus. Come on. Just like Lazarus. Out of that grave, our God, God rewrites history. Jesus, you change everything. When you pour your spirit out, just like Silas, singing with Paul. Praise can break down prison walls. Jesus, you can have it all. 
when you pour your spirit out yeah come on pour your spirit out pour your spirit out pour your spirit out come on make that your prayer pour your spirit out oh Pour your spirit out. Pour your spirit out. Pour your spirit out. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I know you are looking for empty vessels to pour your spirit into, Lord. I pray that you would find some here tonight in this place. God, as we empty ourselves, and Lord, we say pour your Spirit out into our lives. Fill our minds. Fill our hearts. Fill our lives. Fill our conversation. Fill our thoughts, Lord. God, you pour your Spirit out, God. That is our prayer tonight. All you have to do is just ask, seek, Knock, watch the door swing wide open. Roll back that stone. Roll back that stone. Roll back that stone. All we have to do is just ask, seek, knock, watch the door swing wide open. Roll back that stone. Roll back that stone. All we have to do is just ask, seek. Knock, watch your door swing wide open. Roll back that stone. Roll back that stone. Cause all we have to do is just ask, seek. Knock, watch your door swing wide open. Roll back that stone. Roll back that stone. Just like Lazarus out of that grave. Our God rewrites history. Jesus, you change everything. When you pour your spirit out, just like silence, singing with Paul, praise can break the prison wall. Jesus, you can have it all. When you pour your spirit out, just like Lazarus, out of that grave. Our God rewrites history. Jesus, you change everything. Come on, when you pour your spirit. Oh, just like Silas, singing with Paul. Praise can break down every wall. Jesus, you can have it all. Won't you pour your spirit out? Yeah. Pour your spirit out. Pour your, Pour your spirit out. 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 Come on. Pour your spirit out. 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 A little testimony. Laying flat on my back, I was crippled by shame, always being attacked. For so, so many years, but the Lord gave me freedom as I sat in that chair. In a church I found healing, yes I did. At the end of that prayer, so what do you call that? You can try to explain. You can tell me I'm crazy. Ah, but I'm the one he changed. What do you call that? You can say it's not real. I used to think I was crazy. Ah, oh, but I'm the one he healed. Just like Lazarus out of that grave. Our God rewrites history. Jesus, you change everything. When you pour your spirit out, 
Just like silence Singing with Singing power with power. Praise can break down prison walls Every wall Jesus, you can have it all Won't, Won't you, you pour your spirit out Just like Lazarus our God rewrites history. Jesus, you change everything when you pour your spirit out. Just like silence, singing with Paul, praise can break down prison walls. Jesus, you can't have it all. Won't you pour your spirit out? Come on, sing it. Pour it out, Lord. Pour your spirit out. 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 Pour your spirit out, Lord. Pour your spirit out, yeah. Pour your spirit out. Pour your spirit out right here. Pour your spirit out. Pour your spirit out, yeah. Pour your spirit out. Pour your spirit out. One more time, y'all. Pour your spirit out, yeah. Pour your spirit out. Pour your spirit out, yeah. Pour your spirit out, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Pour it out right here. Lord, we're asking right here, right now. Pour your spirit out, Lord. Pour your spirit out right here, Father. God, we are asking. You say, let it be according to your faith. God, according to our faith. Lord, let your spirit be poured out tonight. Let your spirit be poured out, Lord. That is our cry. That is our prayer. That's what we're asking. Lord, let your spirit be poured out right here tonight. God, in this place. In this place. In this place, Lord. In this place, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, you move right here, right now in this place, we pray. Rain down in this place, Lord. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Worthy is the to 
come for creation I see praise to the king of kings you are my everything and I will adore you thank you tonight that we can worship you and honor you and God and press in and get a taste of heaven Lord and Lord all the angels around the throne adoring 
Lord, and I pray that we, your people, would always adore you, honor you, exalt you, lift you up. We thank you for your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Bless tonight, Lord. Let our hearts be open to hear what you would say to us, Lord. Lord, and we thank you, God, that you have us on your heart, on your mind, and you want to help each and every one of us tonight. Lord, and we thank you that we get to see a little bit, a little glimpse God of glory as we worship, Lord, your presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we can get lost in your presence, Lord. We can get lost in your presence, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, bless our nation, bless our leadership, bless our military, our police. God, I pray that you would bless this congregation. Pray you would help those dealing with depression. God, set them free, anxiety, panic. Set them free, Lord. God, I pray that you would help them, God, to get in your heart, get in your mind, Lord. Lord, and the enemy would get out of their minds, God, I pray. God, you do a work. The answer is in your word, Lord. And so we pray you would move, you would minister, God. Lord, even though they may not be here tonight, God, they are somewhere. And so we're asking our prayers not to have limitations. That they would reach them wherever they are and set them free. God, there's something beautiful about your freedom, Lord. We pray that you would move and have your way. God, bless us tonight in this place. God, as we've come, set this time aside for you. Lord, and we pray that you be glorified, you be lifted up. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Everybody said amen. amen. And amen, amen. Why don't you uh, turn for a minute, shake a hand or two before you're seated. Oh, the Lord bless you tonight. Amen. Why don't we, uh, I, know, I know we're shaking hands and hugging and greeting each other and all that goodness, <clears throat> but why don't we find our seats so that I can, uh, what? No worries. If y'all can um, find your seat. Does anybody need a bulletin? Anybody need a bulletin? I'll trust, I don't see any hands, so we're good. Ushers, we're good. I do, uh, I just, uh, let me go through a couple of uh, uh, items of business here. And uh, we'll get into the word. And I want to just um, remind you that tonight uh, through Wednesday, we are going to be fasting. And so I encourage you to uh, join us. Uh, in that fast, uh, people ask me about fasting. Uh, basically, what it means is not eating. Uh, that's 
basically what it means. Uh, so um, some people want to say, well, I'm not going to watch TV. The only issue is they don't have one. So uh, that's uh, easy, fast, isn't it? Um, so, uh, but that's what we're going to be doing uh, beginning um, uh, tonight through Wednesday. And then tomorrow and Tuesday we'll be here for prayer uh, from 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock. I want to encourage you, please listen to me. If you're not going to pray, don't fast. Uh, it really does make it just like impossible. Unless you're just like doing it for a diet, then, then you know, you, it's good. You can do it. But if you're doing it for spiritual reasons, why? Because the devil, <laughs> the devil doesn't like you fasting. And so uh, because fasting is a God thing, it's in the Word of God. It's all through the Word of God. Uh, even Jesus, people say, I want to be like Jesus. What would Jesus do? He would fast 40 days. I mean, other than that. <laughs> so uh, let's don't pick and choose what would Jesus do, uh, but he would fast. And so it's the time we always do at the beginning of the year. We set it aside three days uh, to fast. And so, again, number of things that we're going to be fasting about, praying for, uh, so tomorrow for an hour, 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock, uh, we'll uh, be here. And so I encourage you to come and be a part of that Wednesday. We will be here 7 o'clock, uh, ready to close up our mini-series on the upgrade. Uh, that's what I preached about this morning if you were here. Um, I, that's what I preached about this morning even if you wasn't here. <laughs> I preached about the upgrade. And um, so... I uh, encourage you to come Wednesday with questions. Uh, come and let's let God uh, answer some questions for us. You know, I was driving to church uh, tonight and I was thinking, you know, the problem uh, with too many people today uh, is that we have too many answers. We have just too many answers. And then when the word of God wants to contradict one of our answers, we don't like it. And so we stick with our answer. Uh, my you know, Wednesday night is a time of questions, and um, it's a time of uh, questions that we can ask, that we can dig into, and really, if you've been here any of those times, I'm not the only one answering questions, um, and so I want to encourage you to set time aside. I appreciate you setting time aside tonight uh, to be here, and so um, we took a little longer in worship, uh, so... Um, I'm running out of time to preach, so I want you to uh, get your offering ready so the ushers can come. And that's what, what I want to encourage you. Come on, ushers, y'all can come. Thank you. Uh, they didn't know if I was joking or not. <laughs> Sometimes I do. Um, but uh, this week is a time of fasting, prayer, uh, really digging in. Maybe y'all, you know, some of you came for the fast, for the uh, prayer and prophecy, things to pray about. Maybe you want to pray about some of those things. I uh, encourage you to grab a bulletin. This is our, our going to be our theme for the year of people of the word. And also in the bulletin, we have um, a little story about of the, the gentleman who wrote What a Friend We Have in Jesus. A tremendous uh, story, obviously a story of tragedy and heartbreak. But out of it came an incredible, uh, incredible hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. And so... Uh, if you're struggling in your money, in your tithe, in your offering, what a friend you have in Jesus. He will never, the Bible says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I've never seen them begging for bread. And so I want to encourage you, trust the Lord. Maybe you didn't trust him in 2023 financially. Maybe this is a year that you say, you know what, I want to trust the Lord. Maybe you're wanting that promotion. Trust in the Lord. Amen. Just let him handle your finances. Let him help you. Let him bless you. Somebody needs to say amen to me because I'm talking truth tonight. That's truth. You know, some of us keep our finances to ourselves and say we can do it better. Not we don't say we can do it better than God, but when we don't re release it to God, that's what we're saying in our action. You know, obedience is always proven by action. And so I want to encourage you, let God in your bank account. Let him help you. Let him bless you. You want Again, you want a promotion. You want that raise or that new job or whatever it is. Let God help you. Let him move in your finances uh, tonight. Amen. So uh, heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Greg, lift your voice. Bless the gifting giver.
Yes, Lord, thank you. Amen, amen. Revelation chapter 1, if you can open there, Revelation chapter 1 and Revelation chapter 19. <clears throat> I read a scripture this morning in closing, Revelation chapter 1 verse 16, and it talks about Jesus with a two-edged sword coming out of his mouth. And the book of Hebrews chapter 4 gives us some revelation it says, for the word of God is alive, powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword. And so really what the word of God is, is the word of God is a two-edged sword that knows how to cut and knows how to divide properly, just like a master surgeon would use a scalpel don't put a scalpel in the hand of a novice, but put it in the hand of a, an, an experienced surgeon, and they'll know exactly, precisely where to cut, how to cut, which way to cut, how deep to cut. See, that's the two-edged sword. And so that's why so many believers hurt unbelievers, because we don't always use the sword properly will hurt others with the word of God instead of helping them, instead of healing them, will condemn them. And so, again, the word of God is never, and I say never, there to condemn. It is to bring conviction, to bring challenge, to bring correction, to bring rebuke. It is there for our benefit, but it is never there to give you a hopeless scene. That is not the word of God. If you ever read the Bible and feel hopeless, you misread it or the devil read it to you. Or he's in your mind somehow. So again, here's Jesus with a sharp two-edged sword coming out of his mouth. Think with me, when Jesus comes again, he is going to have... A two-edged sword coming out of his mouth, which the two-edged sword is the word of God. Revelation chapter 19, verse 12. His eyes, I've been waiting for somebody to put this in AI so I can look at it. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. See, this is how critical, let me, let me say this, this is how we are going to recognize him when he comes. Those that don't know the Word will continually doubt just like they do now. So when he comes again, he is not going to come as a stranger, but he's going to come as the Word of God. That's how Jesus is always going to present himself. John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the, the Word was God, the Word is God. Verse 14 of John 1. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us as of the only begotten of the Father. Jesus is the Word. He will never change. When you read the Word, you're reading about Him. You're reading who He is. You're getting to know Him. That's why I want us this year to be a people of the Word. Get yourself a devotion. Get yourself a translation. Get you something that you can get in every day and say, I'm going to get in your Word. I don't care if I'm sleepy, tired, struggling, I am getting in your word because, God, I need to know you. That's how we're going to get to know. And that's how important it is, is when he comes again, watch. And his name is called the word of God. Now, 
in Hebrews chapter 4, the Bible says the word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. Here's what, it, here's what maybe we struggle with. It exposes. The word expose, and I don't want you to be afraid of this word. The word expose means open your eyes. That's what it literally means. The word of God opens our eyes. This is why people can't see what the house of God is truly about. They can't see what generosity is truly about. They can't see what worship is truly about. They can't see what fellowship is truly about because they don't know the word. The word of God opens your eyes. The word of God opens your eyes so that you can see clearly and so that you are empowered to walk out of darkness. The Word of God doesn't deliver from sinful acts, but it opens our eyes to sin before it is ever acted out. That's what Paul said about the law. The law was my instructor, was my schoolmaster. The law was something that taught me. Okay, now that you're taught, what do you do with that? Well, he said, what the law couldn't do, Jesus did. The law couldn't deliver me from sin. All it could do was show me what sin was. Y'all getting me excited tonight. Because now what the Word can do is deliver you from sin. Before you ever cross the threshold, not only do you know it's sin, but God can deliver you. God can keep you before you ever walk into that sin. Into that. Listen, sin, literally, I get it, we're all sinners. We fall, we stumble, we say things, act ways, think ways, whatever it may be. But it should never rule over you. It should never be your master. This is why it is so important to saturate in. Store up the Word. As the book of Psalms says today, said this morning, I will store up the Word in my heart that I will not sin against God. Store up the Word so that our thoughts and desires can be changed before they ever reach the acting out place. The Word has the power. I know this might seem different, but the Word of God has the power to change our desires. And I want to tell you this, and some of you know, our desires are what the problem is. The devil didn't make me do it. The devil, listen, the devil obviously is an issue, but he's not like the, the problem. The problem is what's living in me. The problem, James chapter 1, you can jot these down, read them later, read them here, jot them down, whatever you want to do. James, we have our little notepad on the back of the bulletin. You're welcome to use that. James chapter 1, verse 13 through 15. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God can't be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when he's dragged away by his own evil desire, and he is enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. See, this is why we need the Word of God to stop the death process, to stop it before it ever starts. And we can obey or we can not. Listen, y'all, listen. Every time we sin, something dies. And when we repent, life is breathed back into us. Not when we confess only. Confession is not repentance. Repentance means you've changed your mind. 
What you once liked to watch, you don't like anymore. What you want, you want like to treat people a certain way, you don't like that anymore. How you used to act, you don't like. See, again, God can change our desire so that it can cut off the death process. We need to be a people of life. Y'all with me? Because I'm about done. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. I've only got 11 minutes. Matthew 4, verse 4. But he answered the devil and said, It is written, man... And he didn't only answer the devil, but he answered you and me too. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So literally what Jesus is saying is that he speaks, we live. This is why churches aren't alive. This is why Christians aren't alive. It's because God isn't speaking, not because he hasn't spoken, but because they're not in his word. Because his word is his voice. He speaks. That's what Jesus is saying. We live by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Listen, we have the Word of God on our iPhone, in our bookcase, on our iPad, on our laptop, on our PC. We have, our, we have it on tape. We have it on cassette, CD, 8-track, reel-to-reel. We got it on every kind of social media outlet we can find. We've got the Word. Folks, it is life to those who will go after it. This is how important the Word of God is. It is life to the believer. Listen, let me just say this. If you're ever feeling burnt out, if you're ever feeling beat down, like exhausted, get in the Word. The Word of God. Don't blame the church. Don't blame the pastor. We got too many services. Oh, we're fasting too long. Oh, it's too long of this. It's too... No, no, no. You need to get in the Word. Stop blaming people. Get in the Word. I'm saying stop blaming others. Get in the Word. It's not your girlfriend's fault. Not your husband's fault. It's not your daddy's fault. Get in the Word of God. It's because you're not in the Word. Listen, we've all suffered burnout, burn in, burn down throw in the towel, feel like leaving, quitting, walking away. We've all gone through that. It's because we're lacking something. It's because we're lacking. You know, I think it's funny. Some of y'all ladies know this. When, if you go to any kind of doctors, when you start getting depleted of some, uh, some kind of a deficiency in your body, some kind of a... A hormone, you know, they want to give you like some pill. It's like, no, I need that hormone. I don't need a pill. But see, that's what we do. We start lacking stuff and then we, you know, go after something else. Oh, it must be because I'm not married. It must be because uh, I, I don't eat right. It must. No, it's because you're not in the Word. You know, you read the Bible, not everybody in the Bible was married. And they were fulfilled because they were in the Word. They had the Word. They were hungering. Some of y'all that are single, I'm telling you this year, 2024, listen, I am telling you, I was talking to Abby. I said, Abby, you're almost married, baby. It ain't no more going to be for you. But those that are single, they can go on mission trips and not have to worry about kids or husbands at home. They can go on medical teams and not have to think about all of these other, when you're married and got kids, now you got bills. You got responsibilities. We need to stop looking for the wrong thing to satisfy. And we need to get into the Word and find the will of God. I know I went off a little bit there, but that's all right. Y'all, I'm reeling myself back here. Jesus says in John chapter 8, verse 31, Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed in Him, If you abide in My Word, you are My disciples. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Disciples are free because of the word, not because they're disciples. They're disciples because of the word. They're free because of the word. 
It's, look what it says. If my word abides in you, you are indeed my disciples. No wonder there's no disciples being raised up in many places of the world because they're not in the word. They're in social media than other outlets. They're in church, but they're not in the word. See, the word is what makes disciples, not preachers. Preachers don't make disciples. The word makes disciples. That wasn't in my notes. I think that's revelation. Somebody ought to write that down and remind me later. See, some of us need to recalibrate. Because the closer you get to God, the more stuff falls out. In Hebrews 4, it says the word of God is, an, is a two-edged sword. Cutting. A two-edged sword cutting. <laughs> It's not just a two-edged sword kind of in its sheath. It's a two-edged sword out cutting. The more you allow the word to wash over you, the greater victory that will be released in every area of your life. Psalms chapter 119 verse 1, How can a young person stay on the right path of purity? By living according to your word. I think I could stay on that the rest of the night. But I only got five minutes. Psalm 119.1. How can you stay pure? Get in the Word. Oh, it's so hard. There's so much porn. All the girls are so aggressive. There's this and the guys are so... Listen, get in the Word. You're looking too much in the world. Get in the Word. Stop looking at the world. Get in the Word. The world will always be there. Listen, in every generation, there's been something. In their day, in Jesus' day, it was temple prostitutes. In the Old Testament, it was the same. There's always something to try and distract and pull people away from the Word of God. Get in the Word. The Word will keep you before you cross. How can a young person... And I am one of those. I didn't need no giggles. <laughs> a young person. How can a young person stay pure? By living according to the word. I don't even know why that needs definition, interpretation, Hebrew language. It To me, it's plain and simple. But it's kind of like, well, yeah, but I still want to try it then you know what? You'll pay the price. You will pay the price. You will unfortunately feel what, you, what you're doing and you won't feel right about it. Why? Because you're a man or a woman of God that shouldn't be crossing that way. Read, you know, my encouragement. I think I encourage you to do this some time ago. Read through Psalms 119 and underline. I know it's 176 verses, but listen, you got to do it at some point in your life. <laughs> right? You know, that's the, you know, that's that Bible reading day. It's like uh read Psalms 119 and you know, then is that the only nope, you got four more verses. It's like but Psalms 119, 176 verses. And I want you to underline or circle every time you see the word decrees, ways, law, commands, commandments, precepts, statutes, anything to do with with God setting something in place. 176 verses. Those words appear in every one of them but two. See if you can find the two. I'll have a Starbucks card waiting for you Wednesday. Let me give you a couple more verses. I got a couple more minutes. Jeremiah 23. Does not my word burn like a fire? Verse 29 says the Lord. Is it not like a mighty hammer that smashes a rock to pieces? 
But if you remain in me, in my words, John 15, here he says, John 15, 7 and 8, that we saw it. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted to you. And I'm sorry that I read that back to back like that. But listen, I wanted to make a point. It's talking about his word. Isn't his word like a hammer that smashes things? You know what? Some of us need to pray that. Lord, there's been some stuff that's kind of re- just there kind of hanging out. Can you smash it, Lord? Well, listen, I will tell you, get in his word. I told you today, I like it when scripture growls at me. Somebody told me one time, I used to listen to R.W. Shambach. He's passed away now, but man, he was a screamer. He was a hollerer. He was old. He was like in his 70s. He would preach. Uh, and, uh, and man, I'm like, keep growling at me. Just give it to me right here. I need it. I need that word to growl at me, to get in my business, to get in my face. I need it. Look what he says. Is not my word like a mighty hammer? God, I need it. Yes, I need, Lord, your touch at times. I need that gentle whisper. But, Lord, sometimes I need the hammer. I need you to bring it down because I want some stuff smashed up. And this is the word of God. We need to be a people of the word, not just picking and choosing. This is why we take the whole counsel of God. You know, that's why we don't eliminate Acts chapter 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, Acts chapter 13, Acts chapter 19, Mark chapter 16. Those are all the chapters that talk about speaking in tongues. That's why we don't take those out, because it's the word of God. Some of y'all should have just said amen, Pastor. Because listen, God, if it ain't your word, don't put it in there. <laughs> hey. Okay, let me finish. John 15, 7. Thanks for your patience. But if you remain in me, my words remain in you. Watch. You may ask whatever, anything you want, and it will be granted. That's an incredible invitation of Scripture right there. When you produce much fruit, you are my di- true disciples. The, this brings great glory to my Father. Listen, his word bearing fruit in your life brings glory to the Father, to everybody around you. It's not glory to you, glory to my church, glory to my pastor. Forget that. We we are worms. It is glory to God. Anything good in us is God. And listen to what he says. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples, and this brings great glory to the Father. The word, that, that word remain, it means to stay, to take up residence. Watch, it means to be present at all times. And this is what releases fruitfulness in our lives. The word of God in you invites the glory of God on you. The word of God in you invites the glory of God on you. And that's when we influence others. That's when we are able to speak life into others. Not because we're like them. I'll become like the world to reach the world. Lie. That is a lie. Jesus didn't become a drunkard to reach the drunkard. Amen. He didn't become a prostitute to reach the prostitute. He didn't become a tax collector to reach the tax collector. No. He let the glory of God shine through him that produced the fruit of influence out of his life. John chapter 6, verse 63. The Spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort accomplishes nothing. And the very words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. See, that's the Word of God. That's why we need to be a people of the Word. That's why I'm going to endeavor throughout this year to always direct our conversation, my conversation, to direct our thoughts. Listen, we've got an election coming up. Listen, let your thoughts be of the Word. Hold that guy, that girl, whoever's running, up to the Word of God. Not your culture, not your race, not your ethnicity, not your preference. Well, this is what Grandpa Joe believed. I don't care. What does the Bible say? 
Hold them up to the word. Enough of this madness and the church voting because, oh, you know, we want to be politically correct. No, we want to be biblically correct. We want the word of God. Exalted, And I'm not saying that everyone that is going to be voted in is going to be, you know, a Christian or, or etc. I'm saying hold them up to the word. That's about as much as I preach on voting. See, I really want to embrace the word. I really want to embrace this promise that the word is that he has spoken is spirit and life. See, we need to be a people alive, not a people just living, taking up breath, taking up space. We need to be a people alive because there's enough dead people walking around that we can speak life into them. We have that life to give them. It is from the word of, what do I say? I don't know, find a verse and say it. Other than Judas went and hung himself. Hanged himself. Don't say that to them. Go, go and do likewise. No, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, find a verse. Find a verse. Get a verse. Get it in your spirit and speak it over people. The Word of God will accomplish. Folks, it's time to be a people of the Word. I want you to bow your heads with me. Sorry for taking a couple extra minutes tonight. I appreciate you coming and taking time tonight. It is time, and I want to encourage you to, to agree with me in prayer tonight that it is time to be a man, to be a woman of the Word. It is time to throw away my opinions, uh, those things maybe that I have been taught that aren't lining up with you according to your word. Lord, I am now going to be a woman, be a man of your word, of the word of God. I'm going to set aside my agenda, my opinions, my thoughts, my ideas, and Lord, I'm going to saturate myself in your word. Daily, I'm going to set it some time aside and Get in your word and let your word speak to me. I'm going to set aside some time in my morning or in my evening or in my afternoon, Lord, and I'm going to spend 10, 15 minutes listening to your word, reading your word. God, I want to be a man, a woman of the word. I want to change nations. I want to disciple people. I want my family saved. I want my children saved. I want my friends saved. I want my co-workers saved. Being a people of the Word. This is what's going to change Chesapeake. It's what's going to transform Charleston. Is that we are a people of the Word. So I want to encourage you tonight to let God minister to you. Let God really bring that hunger. And I'm going to just ask you Maybe someone's here and somebody's watching live stream. Maybe and you need to know Jesus. I want to pray a simple prayer with you. I want to say, Jesus, thank you that you gave your life for me. And I am confessing with my mouth and I am believing in my heart. Jesus, that you were raised from the dead. I want to be saved from my sin. And I am asking you, Jesus, to save me. Save me from my sin. In Jesus' name. I am very quickly going to open these altars up. I am not going to take all of your time tonight, but I'm going to open these altars up. If you want to come to the altar, just spend a minute or two praying. Maybe you want to pray, Lord, I need a hunger. God, I want to get in your word, but God, I, I want that hunger. I think some of the things we need to begin to answer is the why. Why are we in His Word? Why? And my encouragement to you this morning was don't treat His Word like a devotion, but treat His Word like it's devoted to you. His Word is devoted to mankind. 
The Word of God is devoted to you. And I want you to begin to think about His Word. Every time you open it up in your devotion, every time you read those scriptures of the day, every time you start reading through the Bible, I want you to think, Lord, Your Word is devoted to me. And right now, I'm asking You, Lord, to change something. Work in me. Let me know You greater. Jesus, let me leave this time of reading your word, knowing you more, knowing the love of the Father, knowing the will of the Father. Lord, let your word, let your word go down deep inside as a two-edged sword. And Lord, I'm asking you to cut away what doesn't need to be there. Lord, cut away what's keeping me from knowing you better. Cut away what doesn't belong. And Lord, even as Jeremiah said, your word's like a hammer. Lord, use it like a hammer, God. Lord, some things have been there from my childhood. Use it, Lord. And as God would use that even in your life, you will sense His grace. You will sense His working in your life. Jesus knew that He did not need a large group of people to change the world. All He needed were men and women of the Word. Men and women who would take the Word and disciple nations. That's, that's all, he knew it. That's all I need. So I want to encourage you th this evening as we get ready to dismiss. We are talking about the upgrade. I said it this morning and I want us to seal it in our hearts at this altar in our seats today that the way we upgrade is by going back and seeing where we started. It was Revelation 2, verse 1, to the church of Ephesus. Go back and do the things you did when you started. It's a simple word for all of us. Is the word surrender. God, I am going to surrender to your will, to your way, to your upgrade in my life. I'm going to surrender. So I want us to stand this evening. Again, I appreciate you giving me a few more minutes tonight. We'll be here 7 o'clock Wednesday to close up this time of talking about the upgrade and we'll close it up with some Q&A. So listen, I'll send out these scriptures tomorrow to you as well so that we can be thinking about this. A people of the word. A people of the word. Get yourself a devotion. Get yourself some kind of program. Something where you're reading daily. Getting the word in you. Saturate your life. And you say, where do I start? It doesn't matter. Leviticus is the Word of God. I know nobody likes to read Leviticus, but it's the Word. So the Word is the Word. So get in it, and it'll help you. It'll change you. It'll revolutionize. And it'll help you walk out of the power of darkness. It'll help you move through your trial. And it'll help you to influence those around you. So... Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Thank you very much. I appreciate you, all of you that are watching live stream. Thank you for watching as well. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed tonight. The Lord bless you as you go. Dennis, you lift your voice and seal us as we go. God bless you tonight.